great. How great is his love for us. Boy, that's a, one of those that's immeasurable. That's one of those. Is it, is it Ruby's birthday today? Yesterday? Yesterday? Sweet girl, little Ruby. Happy birthday, darling. <laughs> oh, my goodness. God is so faithful. He's so good. Um, Sarah, you nailed it with the scripture that you brought this morning. It is completely in keeping with where the Lord is going to take me, take us, I believe, this morning. I love when he does that. I love when um, the Lord pours something into my spirit and I walk into staff prayer and everybody begins to pray the teaching and <laughs> you're just like, oh God, thank you. I, I didn't miss you, at least not totally. And uh, so that's always exciting to me. We are entering into the last week of being positioned for transition. And I'm excited about what the Lord has for us today. I hope you're excited about it. Um, But we're going to press into that and we are going to start with a scripture. If you would pull that up. This is the scripture the Lord gave me when I said, Lord, how do you want us to close this out? I was looking for scripture on arrows. I was looking for scripture that had to do with positioning and transitioning. But the thing that the Lord gave me was he wants us us to know that he is sovereign and he has a plan and it's his plan. And I'm so excited about the, the, the truth that it's his plan and not ours. There's so much peace in that. So if you'll stand and read it with me, if you've got your scripture in your, um, as Kim says, on your comfy couch in your jammies. Um, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Father, I thank you so much for your word. Father, the, the times that this has ministered to me, Lord, I can't even count them. To know, God, that that you have a plan and we get to be a part of it, Father, and that we can walk fearlessly into the center of your will, fearlessly into the plan that you have for our lives, the plan that you have for this house, Father. So I bless you today. I thank you, Lord, that that your vision continues. I thank you, Lord, that your arm isn't short. And Father, even today, you've reached into our midst with an open hand. And we bless you for that today. Father, I pray that um, you would help me to share the things that you've given me. Lord, I pray that you would translate all of those things that I might miss up. Let my stuff fall in your stand. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This passage of scripture, you will find me when you seek me with your whole heart, has been such a um, such a, a foundational scripture for me for as long as I can remember, because I always wanted access to him. I always wanted to be able to hear his voice. I always wanted to know that if I run after him, He's, he's not elusive. He can be found by me. And, um, and so my heart has really been set on that pilgrimage for a long time. And, and I'm so thankful in the moments when I just need answers and I just need clarity. I stand on that place and I run to him. And that's what I've been doing in this series because I really feel like it's important. I believe that the Lord wants us to move forward with clarity and with vision and with hope and with passion. And and um, so I believe that that's where he's taken us today. This, I know the plans I have for you. The thing the Lord dropped in my spirit was, um, he's in control. He's in control. You know, so many people want to convince us right now. The world is spinning out of control. Media wants to convince us that the the world is spinning out of control. And it may be spinning, but it's not out of control. God is still sovereign. And, and, And though it spin, I believe it spin in the palm of his hand. And he is working something in this season, just like he's working something in every season of our life. And we can trust him because he's a good God and and he is faithful. 
and I'm excited about what he has. The last two weeks, we've talked about being positioned for transition. The first week, we talked about an individual transition. We talked about how we go through phases in our life and and we have to lean in and trust the Lord to take us through those phases. I'm just gonna refresh your memory a little bit on those. The first phase was being chosen by God and establishing that he did choose you. You weren't an accident. He didn't look down and go, oh, I didn't mean to do that. You were chosen by God with purpose and and you have been tested for true. Those seasons in your life where God gave you the opportunity to fly straight, I believe those tested seasons are the moments that line up with scripture that says, he searches me and he knows me well. And God does search us and he does know us. Um, He also hides us in the quiver. He also surrounds us with godly people who can speak into our lives and and bring structure and iron sharpening iron. We can go through those seasons where we feel hidden and know that God's gonna bring us out. Personal transition, you know, that's really the one that we feel the most keenly because we're the ones walking through it. (laughs) You know, we can engage in other people's transition, but when it's us, We kind of need direction to know where we're going. So there are also seasons of exposure, seasons where you feel vulnerable, seasons where you're like, God, I need you to cover me. Or on the other hand, Lord, look how shiny I am. And in those moments when you get an opportunity to fly and you get an opportunity to strike a mark in his name and all of a sudden, you know, people might know your name, And the Lord has to bring us to a place of humility and stability on our faces before him to recognize that we are nothing without him. The arrow cannot go anywhere without the archer. The the arrow is just a shiny little toy without the hand of the archer. You know, you see them displayed on museum walls. We were never intended for display. The arrow is intended to fly and strike a mark. And humility and stability comes in those places in our lives where we are knocked upon the bowstring of the the archer. And then he draws us back. And that's where I was kind of saying, I felt like we were as a body, that, that the church at this time is drawn back just a little bit. And we feel like a lot of things have been pulled away from us in this moment. But the beauty of this moment is in that draw, we are the closest to the mouth of the archer that we will ever be. And so we have the wonderful opportunity right now to be receiving instruction from him, to be listening to everything that he says. Just because you're not sitting in the seats doesn't mean you shouldn't be running hard after him running hard after him because when you're drawn back, the next thing is being sent and there's gotta be some impetus behind that. There's gotta be something that that thrusts you across that threshold that's coming and there is one coming. So listen, get in the word, pray, seek him in your own personal transition so that when the time comes and you are released, you are able to fly. And then we shared that one of the wonderful things about being released is that the archer doesn't waste an arrow. You fly once, you strike the mark, the archer goes and retrieves the arrow and uses it again. We have many flights. We have many marks to strike. That was our first week in transition personal transition, how we handle it, how we seek him out in these times. Last week, we talked more about leadership and and how we handle this this generational impartation that we're supposed to be a part of continually, how we advance the kingdom and move forward and things don't die with us. We talked about Elijah. We talked about Elisha and how we are supposed to recognize the calling in other people's lives. And we're supposed to be bold enough in the spirit and confident enough in what God has called us to do to share what we know, to open the mantle, to share it and go, this is what it looks like to walk in this. This is what it looks like to walk in the calling and the anointing that you have. Fearlessly advancing the kingdom of God through generational impartation, through discipleship. And we talked about that last week with Elijah and Elisha, and I love that. I love that God did that. So we've talked about healthy transition personally, and we've talked about healthy transition as it relates to the generations. 
And I really believe that what the Lord would have me share today is what that looks like for us corporately. How do we walk into transition? I have, I've been praying about this for a long time. I mean, I have. From the time that Pastor Bruce and Pastor Wayne made their transition into their next season, I've been praying about what this next transition looks like and, and what the Lord would have for us as a body. Um, and I know that He has a plan. I have to tell you, though, it's bittersweet to me. It, it is very bittersweet to me because Pastor Ronnie has been my pastor for 30 years. Um, He is my friend. He has been my mentor. He has not only uh, led me to the edge of the cliff, he has shoved me off from time (laughs) to time. (laughs) And I can't tell you, I mean, this is the church I've known. I mean, this is the body I've been a part of, and you've been my pastor from the time we moved to Smyrna in 1991. And, you know, it's so easy to walk away from something you don't love. But I love him. And I love Pastor Kevin too. (laughs) And I see the most wonderful things in both of them. And here's the thing about it. I know some of you guys feel that way too. I know some of you are going, well, Pastor Ronnie, I know. (laughs) Kevin, I'm not sure yet. You know, I I know that some of you are there, but I want you to know that what God placed in my heart is this is a Holy Spirit thing. This is something that God has orchestrated. And in order for us to truly honor Pastor Ronnie in this transition, we are to honor what God has poured into his heart. And what God has said in his heart is this is the man. And I am so excited about that. I'm so excited to know that God has a plan and the way that we need to honor this transition, the way that we need to honor Pastor Ronnie is to step in and cover Pastor Kevin. We need to step in and we need to cover him. We need to surround him. We need to be praying for him. We don't need to be going, oh, we used to do it this way and Pastor Ronnie would have done it that way. Let me tell you, Pastor Kevin has been mentored by this man. He has been a son to this man for as long as I've known him. He knows what Pastor Ronnie would do, but he also hears from the Holy Spirit. And he's going to follow the Holy Spirit in all that he does. And I believe that. And I can tell you, if I didn't believe that, I would not be here. It would be going, farewell, Pastor Ronnie and Pastor Barbie. (laughs) It's close. No, I'm teasing. (laughs) But I know, I know how the Holy Spirit feels. I know how he works in these things. And I see it in Pastor Ronnie. I see it in the peace that he has. I see it in Pastor Kevin. You know, it's been, it is one of the greatest honors that I, that I can imagine walking through is to watch my pastor, my mentor, my friend step into his next season to finish this leg of the race. He's got more coming, but to finish this leg of the race and to finish it beautifully, to finish it well. You know, I, I can, in my spirit, I can see Pastor Ronnie, you know, looking over at the, 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 the fair meadows and the, you know, <laughs> peaceful seas and going, yeah, that's, where, that's me. And, and I see Pastor Kevin behind the starter gate, pawing at the dirt, waiting for the buzzer to sound and the gate to open so he can run. He can run. And you know what? He's equipped to run. And one thing I know about him is that he will do it with fear and trembling. He's not walking in assuming he knows everything. He is walking in depending on the wisdom and the counsel of the elders of this body. He has surrounded himself with good godly counselors and he listens to God. How much more can you ask? How much more can you ask? And so we have a calling in this season to undergird both of them with prayer to cover them with prayer. And I I realize that this teaching is uh, very Springhouse specific, but I think the lessons translate into how we walk through transition no matter what. Um, So there were a couple of things when I was praying about what I see in Springhouse in the coming years. And the very first thing 
that, well, <laughs> it's interesting to me because we are moving from a season of live drenched, um, which has been wonderful for us. And I believe that that's where we've walked with this outpouring of God in our lives in such a, a, a drenched way and plowing ground and moving forward. And, and that has suited us so well, I believe, for the last 10 years. I think maybe, uh, of living drenched, that was part of our heart cry, that, Lord, that we would live at the edge, that we would live saturated in your presence. And we're moving from live drenched to life happens here. Life happens here. And you can take that however you want to. It's like life happens here or life happens here <laughs> because it's going to be both. It's going to be both. And the thing that the Lord began to pour into my spirit about this body was the very first thing I believe life is going to happen here in these altars. I am believing God, and I, and I so see it in my spirit. I see an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in this house that just, it's like being held. It's the first phase of the arrow. I believe God is going to bring us into such a season of intimacy where we draw near to Him and, and, and close to Him and, and lay the foundation for worship in this season going forward. When I think about that and when I see it in my spirit, there's no delineation between the chairs and the stage or the platform. I see this field. I see it filled with people with their hands raised. I, I see it, it filled with, with uh, people doing something that looks like dancing. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I think of Kevin. I mean, I think of Isaac and some of the young men, Dave Mason and some of them, when they would just start jumping. And, and I see that in my spirit. But, but one of the things that I also see is I see children. I see children. I see so many young families coming in. I see it. And we better get ready to take care of our kids. We better be equipped for the children because they're coming and, and the parents are coming and, and, and I see them. And, and one of the things that I believe God dropped in my spirit is these children are going to be worshipers. I mean, they are going to be worshipers, abandoned worshipers. And when I, when I saw that in my spirit, I felt like the Lord took me straight to the scripture that said in the message Bible, it says, what are God worshipers like? My answer Arrows aimed at God's bullseye. That's what his scripture says. And so I see that. I see our worship being uh, uh, just strong and intimate and, and, and the, the, the Lord just imparting things to individuals and, and, and leading us forward. Life is going to happen here in these altars, in this house, in these seats. I, I believe that. I see that. The, the very next thing I see is life is going to happen here in our families. In our families, um, one of the things, <laughs> this phrase dropped into my spirit, it, and, and I felt like, it, well, I know, I felt like it was the Lord, and it was, there are going to be a, a lot of good humans who've made bad decisions in this house. There are going to be people walking through these doors who wish they could forget their past. But what we're going to do is we're going to help them walk toward Christ and find healing because of the things that they've walked through. Good people who are struggling, families who are struggling, that, that are going through things, and we're not going to run from them. We're going to embrace them. It's going to be messy. And it's going to be the best kind of messy because you know what? I believe that messy lives make for amazing testimonies. I believe that there's an overcoming uh, thing that is going to, to flow through this house. And you know what? We're going to have amazing worship, but we're not going to be known for that. We're going to have sound teaching, but we're not going to be known for that. We're going to have a great theater, but we're not going to be known for that. We're going to be known for how we love the people. We're going to be known for how we support the families and how we pour into them, how we minister to them in the days to come. That's what Spring House is. That's the legacy that we want to leave is we love you toward Christ. The third thing that I see that's going to happen, that I really believe is going to happen is God is going to build community, community. You know, I was thinking about this, the, 
builders and investors, they don't build just a house anymore. They build communities. They fabricate communities. You want to swim at your own pool, walk by your own lake, take your dog to your own park and, and take your children to the... We're trying to create something by building it and it's something that has to happen in the heart of the people. God connects that need to happen. And I believe that God is going to do that in this house. I'm believing for community within this body. And we're going to have to do time together. We're going to have to invest in one another. We're going to have to make the phone calls, you know, do the texts, have the dinners, play on the playgrounds, have the picnics, do life with one another. And as God builds this community that we need, that's going to be Springhouse, then this community is going to go and bless that community. This community is going to be strong and we're going to be equipped and we're going to have a heart for that community. We're going to feed them. (laughs) We're going to nurture them. We're going to pray for them. We're going to teach them. Whatever opportunity God gives us to walk out beyond these doors, I believe he's going to unify us before he sends us out. And I believe he's going to strengthen that. So those three areas, I really believe that God is going to minister in this house. As life happens here, life is going to happen with an outpouring of the Holy Spirit that cements us in our faith and, and, and renews the passion as we move forward into a new season. God is going to give us a heart of love for the people so that that families are made strong and, and children are brought up and nurtured in the Lord. Then he's going to strengthen us as a whole body, as a whole unit together so that we can go and make a difference in our community and we can put our footprint and our fingerprints on the lives of those that God has surrounded us with. So this is what I need from you. These are, this is what I need from you. I need you to pray. I need you to pray. I want you to pray for Pastor Ronnie. When I pray for him, I pray, Lord, that his latter would be greater than his former. I pray, I I see adventure in his life and I pray for you. I pray for for great joy in... I pray for so much laughter, you can't stand it. I pray for health and wholeness and for God to use you in the most miraculous and unexpected ways. Pray for Pastor Ronnie. Pray for him and cover him. Pray for just fullness of life and and rich joy as he goes forward into this next season. It's a job well done. It's a job well done. And I believe God has so much for him in this season. Pray for Pastor Kevin. It's a big mantle. It's a big mantle. Pray for Pastor Kevin that he would hear God's voice first and foremost and that he would obey whatever the Holy Spirit tells him to do. Just cover his family. Pray for Sherry. Pray for Sherry as she steps into this place and and becomes this, this co-worker in Christ with Pastor Kevin. God's not through with Sherry. Sherry's got a calling and anointing on her life that we've not even, we've not touched it yet. You just wait. You just wait. (laughs) Pray for Hadassah. The oldest child of a pastor is no fun. Sets the example. Pray for Lucia and Ruby and Nora because they're going to become our first family. We prayed for Pastor Ronnie and Pastor Margaret and for Isaac and Arwen and Valerie for years and and we're going to keep praying for them. But now begin to pray for the O'Days. Pray for those little girls. Pray for their mommy and daddy and, and that first calling of being parents to stay priority and then go to the rest. Pray for him. Pray for this church. Pray for our elders because they are coming under a new, a, a new lead and they want to support him. Give them wisdom in how to surround him and cover him. Pray for the elders. Pray for the admin board as we go forward. Pray for me. Pray for me that I would be a help, that I would know how to wash the hands of Elijah, pour water on their hands that I would be a help. I I want that, I I want that. And then the prayer that I want you to pray, 
just from this point forward is that in everything, in everything, this has been the heart cry of this body for 30 years. God, I want more of you. God, I want more of you. I want more of you in my individual walk. I want more of you, Father, as I come into obedience to the calling that you have on my life. I want more of you as I sit in the pews with these people. I want more love. I want more of you. And if we will begin to pray that, if we will begin to ask Him for more of His presence, more of His wisdom, more of His direction, more of His peace, then all of these things will be added to us. So we're going to pray a prayer. Sing a song. Go ahead, Brittany. that you would allow it to become your prayer. If you would just sing it with us, it's so simple. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh Lord, I want more of you. Lord, I want more of you. Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, continue to breathe through this place. May the breath of God be our constant. May your presence fill this house. I pray that your blessing follow Pastor Ronnie, that your blessing cover Pastor Kevin, Father, and that your presence saturate this place as life happens here in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.